So this is the video for DBG Book 6, Chapter 19. Go ahead and mark it up. Okay, in this first sentence, we have weary. They're going to be the subject. Um, in terms of verbs, I see akeperunt and communicant. Prep phrases, ab uxoribus, um, ex suis bonis, and cum dotibus. Aestimatione and facta are both ablative. Since facta is an ablative participle, chances are this is an ablative absolute, which it is. Um, when you have quantos and tantos, that's like how much, dot, 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 so much, um, you can sort of think of quantos to akeperunt as a clause um, in and of itself. Um, maybe it's just better if we just translate it left to right, though. So here we go. Uh, men, however much money they have received from their wives in the name of a dowry, so much, and then money is understood, so much money they, um, they share from their own profits uh, with the dowry with a, an estimate having been made, with an appraisal having been made. So in other words, when a man and a woman get married uh, in Gaul, according to Caesar, um, the woman's family is going to give the man's family a certain amount of money as a dowry. And then however much money they give, let's say they give, just for sake of argument, let's say they give $1,000. Then what the man would do was sort of estimate how much money is going to be given to him and then from his own wealth, from his own money, he would then fork over $1,000 and they would just sort of share that in one pot of money, okay? Um, so, you know, however much money the men received from their wives uh, in the name of a dowry, so much money they share with the dowry from their own wealth with uh, an appraisal having been made, okay? Now, from who used to servantur, uh, I see two verbs. Habetur is one, and servantur is another. It's going to be some kind of subject change because we go from singular to plural. Um, the subject of habetur, the only thing that looks nominative to me would be ratio. And um, the subject of servantur, we're not really clear on. It could be fructus, which means profits, but that U.S. with the long mark, fourth declension noun, could be nominative plural or it could be accusative plural. Um, so, let's piece it all together. I see that huius and omnis and pecuniae are all next to each other. Those all look genitive to me. And so, let's start with ratio. Um, so, uh, an account, it literally is held. Uh, an account is held conjunctum jointly of all of this money. And um, since servantur means to uh, guard or preserve, or even to save, and fructus means profits, I'm going to s assume that this is the DO, and the subject would be uh, the man and the woman, and they save the profits, okay? Now going from utor all the way to, to perwainet, I see uh, superawit, um, no, uter, sorry, means which of two, if you're talking uh, interrogatively, and if not, um, then here it's really focusing more like a relative, like the one of two. Um, superawit, it's really hard to tell this. You just have to take my word for it. It's syncopated for um, superawerit. It's per, I'm sorry, it's a future perfect. You hardly ever see those. So jot that down, superawerit. Um, in the rest of the sentence, we've got ad eum. Pars looks nominative. Cum fructibus is a prep phrase. Uh, superiorem temporem, genitive. And then perwainet would be some sort of main verb. Um, and the subject would be here, uh, uter. So uh, the, one, uh, the one of them, it's, like, it's almost like you have to add in who or something like that. So um, the one of them who will have survived in life um, to that one, part of each uh, comes 
with the profits of previous years. Now, uh, <laughs> what that means is uh, pretty much anybody's guess, and there's been a lot of discussion about that that I'm not going to bore with, bore you with. But um, basically, whoever dies first then gets pretty much uh, all of that money that was set aside. Um, plus, I'm assuming that means that that money has been gaining interest over the years. Um, so part of, of each, meaning like part of both, meaning both parts that were put into this big pot of money, comes to this person along with the profits of previous years. Okay? Now, moving on from weary, <coughs> excuse me, to potestatem. I see a prep phrase with in uxores, just like with in liberos. Haben is a main verb. Potestatem would be a direct object. Um, Wetai and nekis both look genitive, and then the only thing that's left is weary men. Subject, men have the power of life and of death over their wives, just as over their children. Semicolon. Moving on. Um, we do have some sort of circumstantial clause here, or cum clause. De keset would be the main verb of this cum clause. Um, and inside the clause, uh, pater familiae is the subject, modified by natus, and then illustriore, note the IOR, comparative, is modifying loco. Um, main verb of the whole rest of the sentence, we've got one here with conveniunt, and propenqui, that means relatives, that's going to be our subject. Um, now, we have some sort of if clause here with C. I'm going to back up, use punctuation as my friend. Oh, gosh, sorry about that. De morte is a prep phrase. Race seems to be the subject. In suspicionum, a prep phrase. Wainit is the main verb of a clause. Can close that. And then the then part, we have habent is the main verb. Quaestionum is a direct object. Two prep phrases with deux soribus and in servilem modem. Then we have another if part. It si compertum est. Compertum est would be the main verb. And the then part, interficiunt, would be the main verb. Um, and all, all I can say really is that igni omnibus tormentis. All of those look ablative to me. And excruciatas is a participle that is accusative plural, and it's feminine, so it's probably describing women. Um, so, back to the beginning. So we know men have power of life and death, and when the head of the household, born from a, uh, it's comparative here, so we would have to say born from a more distinguished place, dies, um, I'm sorry, or died, um, literally, because it's perfect tense. So when the head of a household born from a more illustrious place died, um, his relatives come together. And if the thing comes into suspicion concerning his death, they have an inquiry concerning the wives in the in the manner of a slave, meaning uh, they would torture the wives. So if there was anything suspicious about the this way the way that this you know more distinguished person died, they would torture the wives. And it, see compared to est, if it was uh, found out with certainty, in other words, that the that the wife killed the husband, um, if it was discovered or I should say wives, plural, if, if, if it was discovered with certainty, um, they would kill them, meaning the wives, excruciatas, having been tortured by fire and by all torments. Oh, boy. Now, moving on. Speaking of death and funerals, uh, we've got this sentence here, funera to sumptuosa. Um, I see a prep phrase with pro culto, uh, and really, you know, kind of includes galorum there. Sunt would be the main verb. Funera is going to be our subject. 
and Magnifica and Sumptuosa are both describing the funerals. <coughs> Excuse me. Pro in this sense usually means like on behalf of, in front of, for. Um, it can also mean in proportion to, and that's probably what it means here. So funerals are in proportion to the uh, to the um, uh, sorry to the civilization of the Gauls. Funerals are uh, magnificent and expensive. So I think what he's saying there is, you know, in Roman terms, we really wouldn't think that their funerals are very magnificent and uh, expensive, but in proportion to the civilization of the Gauls, they certainly are magnificent and expensive. Um, so then here we have from Omnia, let's take it from Omnia, uh, really I think we're going to have to go to the end of the sentence, but we'll, we'll go from Omnia to Inferent. Um, I see Quai is going to start some sort of clause, and I'll probably end that at here, Arbitrantor, main verb of the clause, Arbitrantor. Um, inside the clause you've got Fuise, that's an infinitive, and then uh, prep phrase and enignum, Inferent would be the main verb um, of the whole sentence so far. Omnia is probably going to be a direct object. Um, the subject would be the Gauls. What do they do? And they uh, bring into the fire all things which they think were, and then you have to kind of add in a word, they think were dear, I guess. They think were dear to the heart um, for those living, okay? Um, so all of that stuff that they think were, were dear um, to the heart um, for the living, they, they carry it into the fire. Etiam animalia, even animals, and um, we have supra hanc memoriam, um, Paolo. So a little bit, uh, then we can go ahead and mark this, supra hanc memoriam, and um, a little bit before this memory, meaning like a little bit, uh, the gist of that is um, a little bit before like living memory. In other words, maybe just a generation or two before Caesar's time, uh, a little bit before memory, slaves and clients. So they would even, you know, like throw slaves and clients into the fire at a funeral pyre for a very uh, distinguished person whom, quos, um, here we have, so, and a little bit before this memory, slaves and clients, and we'll go ahead and mark them as subjects, slaves and clients, whom, constabat, that's going to be the main verb inside this clause, sa, delictos sa, rather, would be the infinitive, ab eis, prep phrase, um, justis funeribus confectis, those are all ablative words, and since confectis is a participle, chances are it's an ablative absolute. And crema bantur is our main verb. So we know ultimately that um, you know they threw stuff that was dear to the heart for the living into the fire, uh, even animals. And a little bit before this memory, slaves and clients crema bantur they were burned. Oh boy! So slaves and clients whom uh, constabat means uh, it is known, or it was known, or it was evident, whom it was evident uh, to have been cherished by them, meaning by the dead ones, um, with the, um, with lawful funerals having been uh, made thoroughly or accomplished, like with all the other lawful and, and expected funerary customs having been done, the slaves and clients uh, were burned um, together with them, meaning with the dead person. Slaves and clients whom, of course, it was known had been cherished by them. Okay? Hope that that's clear. Ask me questions if you don't understand. Go on to 20.